what is the secret to a great audition? Because the reason why I ask you that is because no one ever knows when you open that door, what's going to happen in that room. Be yourself. Okay. Walk in and be you. That's all they want to see in the room. Um, and be confident in that. Make a choice, make a bold choice, and, and stick to it. Um, in most auditions I've booked, it has been making a bold choice and being like, this is what you get today, and if that's not what you want, great, it's not for me. Um, but yeah, being you is, is key. Welcome the company of Some Like It Hot. Hey. Well, first of all, this musical is so beautifully crafted, and the cast is perfection. <laughs> Come on. Thanks a lot. Take care. What is it like living in the world of this Some Like It Hot, and what has made it so special for each of you? Any of you can start. <laughs> Who wants to start first? I'll, I can start. Great. Um, it's so thrilling to be a part of a, a musical that is really making waves in this time and age. And um, for me, I know it's it's such a, a blessing to be able to have um, another character of representation for little black girls out there, you know, and um, to make it, it's a monumental move in my opinion. Um, and the songs they get to sing and, and just the, the community that we have is truly something that is unique and something that was really tailor-made for all of us, I think, um, divinely orchestrated in the most beautiful way. It's also nice to be part of this season on Broadway because it's uh, literally people have been crawling back. So <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been nice to, nice to be part of this season that sort of welcomes everyone back to uh, Broadway. And I, I'm, I'm very proud of it. Yeah, to sort, of, to sort of add to that, it was so nice to go into rehearsals like right after the pandemic and to be able to be around people again and be able to do what we love again and all be together. And it was really a joyous uh, process and so much fun to work on. And also, you know, everyone did like a lab first and then pandemic and then a second lab and then Broadway and everyone pretty much stayed and it was great. And Natasha was, joined us later, but yay. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was great. But also the, the best part of that was we were able to, you know, build the show around this amazing group of people and ask for their input and, f you know, figure out what was best on them. And it really was terrific. It was a great experience. It was a wonderful opportunity of collaboration and trust and love in the room, um, creating this project and, and building it together and the evolution that we've all experienced. Um, like you said, having done it pre-pandemic and then having the time away from it and coming back to it with fresh eyes and fresh energy. And it has been such a joy to create this story and tell it eight times a week with this amazing group of people, truly. I also wish that we'd had videos, which I don't think we do, of Jay and Christian tap dancing in the first lab, <laughs> tap dancing now. We've come because, a long way. Long way, and it's awesome. I mean, I didn't really, we didn't know it would take that long, but it was also every time, I'm every time they did. came back, uh, that, no, not to like learn tap, <laughs> even though it was four years, but um, no, but seriously, every time they came back from, from pandemic or from, from an in-between lab and rehearsals, they were so much better each time because they got to the time to absorb it. Well, maybe I didn't say all that right, but they're amazing. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> um, I'll just jump in and say as well, it's, it's just been an amazing experience. Um, this uh, audition was my um, first, in, the callback was my first in-person um, callback or audition since the pandemic. So it was just thrilling to be able to go into the room and then to meet these cre fantastic creatives in the room was extraordinary for me. And I thought I was just going to just enjoy the show just because I was, it was an opportunity to get back to work. But because we got back to work and got back to work with such an intentional piece that um, is decidedly uh, one of my favorites now because of its inclusivity and how it creates space for everyone, not just in our building, in the, in the theater building, but for the audience. I think it is an extraordinary opportunity. So I'm, I'm, I just get to have fun and play and work every day. So it's um, just a blessing, just a blessing. Who wants to go next? Uh, oh, we all have to go, okay. Um, <laughs> 
uh, no, for me, uh, I, I think it's just been a, just a delightful surprise. Every turn of this, um, uh, this, this journey of this, uh, I just said journey. We're going to say journey a lot today. <laughs> As you need to say, uh, drinking uh, game every time someone <laughs> says journey. Um, every twist and turn of this uh, 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 development of, of this piece <laughs> um, has uh, just been such a, an incredible, uh, wonderful surprise. You know, I, we like we he said we started it like four years ago with like the first reading or something, and um, uh, you know it was lovely. It was it was very exciting and it was fun. And you know you sort of think, well, I don't know, maybe something will happen with this. Who knows? And then the world shuts down and everybody gets depressed and sits in their room and thinks, will I ever get out of this room again? And then the first thing coming back was, uh, was a reading of the new script where they said, we're all gonna be six feet apart, we're gonna have masks on, we're gonna have the, 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 the windows open, you know, and, and, and so we walk in there, everybody's a little nervous, everybody's a little, and Mark starts singing and playing these songs on the piano and it was just like a blossom of, of a flower, just like life coming back. And, and since then, it's just been a glorious ride. And the fact that we are um, on Broadway with this show that is, that is just like, you know, bringing such delight to people and, and to us, frankly, um, it's just been an incredible turn of events. And I'm so grateful to be a part of it. So sweet. And at the Schubert Theater, it's incredible to be in the Schubert. Schubert Alley is so special. I remember first moving to town that, um, the gift shop right there, buying the libretto to Sweeney Todd um, <laughs> in that little shop in Sheward Alley. So it's, it has a lot of nostalgia for me. Um, Spamalot was 18 years ago in that theater, and it's so surreal. I was on the fourth floor, and now I'm on the second floor. That feels fun. <laughs> but you know, we're in the stage now. We opened December 11th, right? And you know, we developed it for years, and we rehearsed it. We went through previews, and then we opened. And I can only speak for myself, but like, I was still like nervous and didn't quite understand the whole story. We were just like so excited to be doing it. And now it's late May, and it's spring, and we've seen the whole season, and we've celebrated with our friends. And for me, I think I'm just now starting to understand the rhythm of the show. and. Um, we're all finding new things. It's getting funnier. It's staying true. Thank you. <laughs> no, I think there's something sweet and fundamental about the story that it is a true story and that it, it speaks emotional truth and people care about telling this story. So we never get out of control with it or, or I don't think we get hoggish with it because we um, care about it so much that we want to present the best version of the show. But yeah, we're like finding new things and the show is kind of telling us where to hit the gas and where to like uh, that might be too much and we're self-policing um which is rare <laughs> but it speaks again to the quality of the material you get to just walk out on stage and do these songs and this script and it's a treat and it's i mean it's pretty amazing especially as a director after six months it's almost six months right it is six months mm -hmm. Uh, six months a lot of times actors get really big and start getting false in their in their roles. And but they started that way. So <laughs> oh. nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. But it hasn't changed in it hasn't changed in the show. Everyone is really playing with each other in the right ways. And it's pretty it's pretty incredible and so great to see. It really is. Mark, do you want to say something that's maybe so special for you? <laughs> it's all special. I mean, you know, we're just so lucky to get to do it and to have careers. Uh, for Scott and I, we've been doing this for three thousand years. Uh, next week, as a matter of fact, they're having an event at uh, Marie's Crisis Piano Bar. Uh, Scott and I are going to go there and play songs because that's where we met in 1976. I, I like to say that was the year of the Tall Ships and Legionnaire's Disease, Son of Sam, and Mark Shaman. <laughs> We met in Marie's Crisis, so we're going to go back to Marie's Crisis and sing through the uh, through some some tunes. <laughs> I love it. What was it? I mean, you didn't know each other. You were both there. Were you playing Mark the piano? Like, how did you two like say? Or Scott's heard this story so much. I'll yeah. I said I'll tell it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was still a kid from New Jersey. I had gotten my GED, my uh, good enough diploma. Uh, <laughs> So I, I wasn't in school anymore, and I wanted to go to New York. Anyway, I was there with some friends to see an off-Broadway show, ironically called Boy Meets Boy, at the Actors Playhouse. We ran into some other friends from New Jersey right there on the corner, and, and we just ran into this little place that was right there. And there was a piano, and I was 16 years old and full of 
vim and vigor and started playing and just like out of an old black and white movie the bartender was sweeping up and he stopped John Michelle, John Michelle and he said uh Hey, kid, you're good. Wait right here. <laughs> and he went, and Scott was directing a comedy act at, at the, the duplex, duplex. That, the original duplex. And so wow. Scott and his four friends came, and they were standing on that stairway. And they said, can you play together wherever we go cheesy? And I went, oh, you mean like at a bar mitzvah? So I knew their <laughs> sense of humor right away, and I played together wherever we go cheesy. And they were like, you're hired. And that's, that's how we met. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I've never heard that story before. It is, it's true. You're the only one. I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll all come down for the anniversary. When are you going down there to do this? It's next Thursday. June, June 6th, I think it is. June 6th, Marie's Crisis. That's where you want to be on there. For Casey, Mark, and Scott, talk about the wonderful idea of switching the time frame of the show from the 20s to the 30s and what that switch opened up for you as creators to tell this brand new story. Well, I think it was about more stakes, yeah. you know, and also the idea of of ending the show with uh, the lifting of prohibition, and sort of because we also didn't want to suddenly ha we didn't want it to you know we've seen Thirty Modern Millie and stuff we didn't really want it to be flappers and that kind of that kind of feel like the film was and so it was that's what it basically came uh, out of it. But it also changed the musical vocabulary as well, so it was a different time uh, musically. It was a different time. Anyway, there was some way to make an adjustment to make it not exactly like the movie so that it wasn't just like a carbon copy or a Xerox because we have learned from all ways to learn that you just can't do that. You know, you have to explore and change. And so that was one thing. And the depression, too. You know, that was, that was, a, that was a big part of it. And costumes. Greg was like, please don't set it in the 20s. <laughs> the costumes, for those of you who have not seen this show, you need to see this. The costumes in this show are spectacular. I mean, Greg Barnes did such a beautiful job. For the cast, do you remember the first time you saw yourselves done up? Either as Joe and Jerry or Daphne and Joseph Fiennes. I'm sure that was totally different for you two at the end. And for the ladies and Kevin, when you first saw yourself made up in costume and wigs and everything, what went through your minds that first time? She cute. <laughs> she cute. <laughs> Honestly, it's like, oh my gosh, I mean, Greg Barnes knows how to, he knows the way, I don't want this to sound some type of way, but he understands the human body and how to formulate um, clothing to not only reflect the character, but also to reflect you. Um, and that was such an honor to like <laughs> get to wear his stuff every single night. Um, yeah, I think my first costume that I had ready and able to put on was the one um, at the train station that Sugar comes out in her first appearance and talk about feeling just just beautiful, just powerful and just feeling like I am a woman, you know, like he brought out the woman in me. Sometimes I can be like, oh no, a little girl, no, no, you know, like I just get a little, <laughs> you know, try to hide, but he's like, you, you're not gonna hide in this. So it's been a real journey, like spiritual journey. Oh my God, with costumes that, that's a, that's an artist, okay? <laughs> yeah, Greg Barnes takes such care with everyone, um, from swings, understudies. He like takes such care and attention to who you are. Um, we were having conversations during the pandemic about he, he was watching the workshop videos and formulating these costumes based on the work I was doing in the workshop, and and really building these costumes to help tell the story. And so. All of those fittings, we would leave fittings, both of us in tears, uh, just excitement and joy and the ability to bring this to life. They just showed me a swatch of the beading on my lapel for my finale dress and I fully like burst into tears. Just the way it caught light and the, 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 the evolution I get to take in the show, it just showed me that literal and figurative glimmer of light that um, I was excited to share with audiences. So. Yeah, Greg Barnes is a living legend and amazing. <laughs> and for but also the pandemic those. had shut so many shops down. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, and so I would see Greg in the basement of the Schubert Theaters who's sewing sequins himself for hours. <laughs> um, such a huge part of it too is The Wigs by Josh Marquette. Yes. And I remember the first time, because I had been using rehearsal wigs for Josephine. <laughs> <laughs> and rehearsal wigs were 
helpful in terms of choreography, but not in terms of feel or getting people to focus because <laughs> keeping hair out of your eye the, too. Yeah. There was a lot of hair in the But eye. when I fr like put on my real wig, I, f I was like, okay, this I, I buy this and also like, okay, that's my mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how I felt. I felt like I put on my costume and my wig and and the whole Shebang. Um, I first saw a, a glimpse of it because uh, Greg Barnes does these paintings of your characters that were just exquisite. And that's when I cried, when I saw the painting of um, Sue's character. But when I actually put it on, I saw my aunties and, and my mother, and I felt like I know who this woman is. I know who she should be and couldn't wait to sort of bring those spirits up in what the costumes allowed me to feel with them. So that was great. Beautiful. That's one of my favorite moments in the show is when you come out in your final that purple. Oh, that is an, it's so exquisite, and you look so spectacular. And it's such a, it's such a great ride up into that. I almost said journey. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Natasha inspired that costume, too, because when we did the lab, she just pulled all these clothes, clothes from her wardrobe at home. <laughs> and she, one night, just like burst out in this purple outfit. And we're like, whoa, what just happened? <laughs> and it was Costume great. Change, and Greg baby. was like, we got to keep that. Yeah, we we have change. to keep that feeling. <laughs> it was so great. I loved it. Kevin, the first time for you when you're Sir Osgood. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, I don't get to wear all the, all the really fancy stuff, but I was like, he's going to turn this into a millionaire? Good luck. <laughs> and I saw this, like, I saw the, the sketch that he had, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to pull this off. Like, this is this debonair, like, looking guy on his sketch. And uh, so I do remember looking at myself in the mirror going, like, I can't believe it. I'm a millionaire. Look at that. I look like a million bucks. Wow. <laughs> I love that. You know, and for the cast, how that switch opened up the musical to greater diversity, which is so beautifully done in this show. For Adriana, Jay, and Natasha, talk about the impact of basic representation and how special these roles mean to each of you. So beautifully written, so beautifully executed. Who wants to start? Jay. I mean, uh, again, talk about the growth and the journey we've, we've had with this. It, it has been such a delight, even from that first reading I did in 2019, to where we have ended up with the, the, the project. It just, we've all grown so beautifully together. Uh, and the conversation remained open at all times to um, collaboration and making sure that I, there were things that I say in my real life that found their way into the script that I would come in and be like, oh, okay, work. It just helps me ground that much more to be able to resonate and to be able to tell the story. And from that, I have moments at the stage door with so many queer and trans and non-binary people who are like, thank you for the representation. Thank you for allowing me to see a part of myself on stage, to see my humanity, to see my my existence in such a beautiful way for this this part of myself that I can't explain or people who are starting that journey for themselves and don't know how to find that language, and now they cease a way to continue on in life. And that is not something I take lightly. It is something that I am grateful to have this opportunity to share this journey, to be that representation, and to be that light and that hope for people. Yeah. Beautifully put, beautifully put. Who wants to go next? I guess I'll jump in. Can I ask you to repeat the question, though? <laughs> The impact of basic representation. Oh, 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 yes, yes. I knew I had something to say. Um, <laughs> this show is, it, it's been the impact, this, the, sh the impact of the show for me has been in extraordinary in that we can no longer do theater the way we've been doing theater. It will not survive. Um, that audience, the audiences are not wanting the same type of shows, the same messages. And the fact that there is room and space for everyone, and it doesn't, just because I'm represented and I'm not a person that you would normally see in, in this particular, leading this band in this particular time period, the fact that I'm there allows the growth and expansion of our audience to just get even wider and embrace one another. So I think the impact is not even fully felt, but our creatives have been so intense 
intentional about um, including people, diversity, all of those things that are these buzzword now that they were thinking about seven years ago, you know, when they started the idea of this production. But I think that we, the impact hasn't fully been felt, but I'm so grateful that the, we are opening doors and opening eyes to people that see, wow, that's just like me, even though I'm not just like them. Uh, I'm not just like her, I'm not just like him, but I can see and I can feel that there are space and room for everyone. So I hope that that is, continues to be the impact because without it, our theater will die without opening our minds to the way things used to be and, and understanding that things have to change. Um, it will not exist uh, much past the 20, 2023. So I'm so grateful that this show has been a part of that change and been a part of pushing the idea that we all belong and that we all have a voice and validity in presentation. So um, that's what I'm most grateful for about this production. Yeah, yeah just to tag along to what Natasha was saying about belonging, um, I always tell this story when I think about this role in particular. Um, um, back in college, we had to, there was an assignment that we had of like, okay, if you are the prototype of someone that's now on Broadway, who would you be? And I felt so stuck. I was this girl who didn't know anything about musical theater, and I and I came in, and I was like, well, I guess I'm a mix, a random people. I guess I'm a mix of Patti LuPone with Lilius White. I don't know. Like, I had no answer for that. And a girl in the class was like, well, Adriana's just going to be, she's going to be an originator. Um... And that, that is a dream of mine to be able to do that today. Um, and there's a line in the show that Sugar says, you know, she's like, I am already the first Sugar Cane. Um, and my professor recently saw the show and he was like, Adriana, always remember that. I remember seeing you and we would, they would put me in things. I was like, guys, you know, like I don't, I can't play Mrs. Lovett in, in Sweeney Todd. I can't do this. I can't do that because the spectrum was very much like, especially with the knowledge that I had of musical theater, I was like, either I'm an Audrey McDonald or I am a, <laughs> a Jennifer Holiday, and I don't, I don't fit anywhere. Um, but the beauty of this character is, it's like, like I said earlier, is that I've. It's such a blessing to be around such beautiful cultivators who actually challenged me to have a voice in whoever I wanted Sugar to be. I'll never forget um, Casey and Matt coming up to me and saying, Adriana, we don't want you to play Marilyn Monroe. We want you to be you. And I thought, oh, my world just opened up, you know, um, and there was less pressure about it. But to be able to stand on that stage and see little girls out there and be like, I know what it feels like to like, look up and be like, oh my gosh, I can do it. I remember what it was like to see Brandy play Cinderella and how much that it really impacted me. And now I get the chance to fill my own shoes and be who I am fully and completely without apologizing. That was a huge milestone for me in my life, um, especially being in an industry where it's, it's tempting to want to become a cookie cutter version of something that already works. But thank God you have people that you see up here who understand that life is way bigger than what has been taught to you. Um, it is bigger than, the world is massive. <laughs> There's so many different types of people. And if I get to represent that in the smallest fraction and it touches the lives of people, whoever they are in the audience, um, I wanna do that and this show provides that for me. Beautiful. I mean, that, that really is the, the really great thing about, about how they handled diversity in this show, is yeah. that they didn't just check boxes. It wasn't just like, okay, we'll have a black sugar cane. You know, they allowed it to affect the narrative. They changed the story to, 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 to allow for that. I think that is, is one of the greatest uh, things to come of this, is, is to really um, see that it's not just about, you know, casting somebody, you know, in a traditionally white uh, uh, role because it's been played by a white person before. But if you're going to have a black person there, if you're going to have somebody of color in this role, it's going to affect the story. And the, and the writers need to take that into consideration as well. And I, I think that that's like, I love that that happened with our show. Yeah. Christian, do you want to add anything to this? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, this gets into the creators now. Talk about Matthew Lopez and Amber Ruffin's updated approach to the story. The book is so beautifully written for this musical, I mean, that you were able to take, you know, sort of what the movie was based on and just turn it up, upside down and make this whole new story. Well, I'm but, glad you mentioned Matthew because he, especially as we started oh, yeah. work, he was 
very often kind of like the traffic cop yeah. of saying, no, don't, you know, you can't say that or don't do that. Or why do we want to do that? Let, let, how about we do this? And so he was, you know, extremely a part of, of the kind of decisions that we're all talking about. Uh, but it was very like piece by piece by piece. Mm -hmm. And like when Natasha came into audition, we had every race, color and size women came in, you know, like Debbie, Debbie Gravitt and, uh, and, you know, Randy Graff and, or, and Natasha. And that was kind of also great that we just kind of said, now that we're actually auditioning for this role, let's just let it be totally open and let the person who we cast mm -hmm. define what it's going to be. And thank God yeah. Yeah. she walked in. <laughs> also, too, I mean, I, I knew that I wanted to be sure it didn't feel like a revival yeah. or it didn't feel like, you know, a, a show that you were seeing regionally or something. You know, I wanted to make sure it had its own personality, that it felt like it was contemporary and modern, even though it was still classic and retro, and that it, it sort of bridged the gap. And, and, and I think we've been successful with that because I feel like, you know, I've gotten emails from people saying, oh, my God, I loved the show. I went with my dad and his wife and my wife and my son, and it's just... Every, and they said everybody loved it. And I think that we've managed to, without going like, we got to please everyone, we've managed to have everyone relate to it in one way or another, no matter what their generation is. And I, I think that's a big, I feel so happy with that and, and so glad to hear people say that. That's beautiful. Scott, you want to add something to this? No, I'm just to say that um, I'm the oldest person on this creative team. <laughs> <laughs> And so I was the one who was uh, stuck in the movie. So it, uh, it it took it it took Matthew and and Casey and and uh, to to mo wean me off of it. And obviously, it, to great better effect because I I you know I had you know I grew I grew up I might have seen that movie when it came out. So it was, you know I was. <laughs> well, you were very very well, I was very young. young. I mean, yeah. <laughs> But alive. But alive. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, we had this kind of good thing in that there already was a musical, yep. Sugar, written by the giants of musical theater. And so without in any way dishing it, yeah. we always knew, well, let's not do what they did in Sugar, it, as we could. It was just like what Casey's saying. How do we find a new way to tell this story because there was no reason to repeat what they had done on Sugar. So we had like this, this like, you know, I didn't know that show. Yeah. So every now and then I say, Scott, play me five seconds of what the song was, just to make sure our idea of what the song could be was, you know, something different, something to the left. I, of course, right had seen it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> so he played more than five seconds for you, right? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't let him because it, it yeah. sticks. Well, that's what I want to get into you two. When you were working on the score, who were some of the artists and the musical sounds that inspired you during the writing process? The score to this is flawless. I, it, I told you, it stays on repeat in our house every day. I <laughs> mean, it's you, so Richie. beautiful. So who, what were the sounds you had in your head of the 30s and that whole sound? Well, well, we have both worked with Bette Midler. And so um, she's like the, we used to call her the Margaret Mead of, of uh, American music. So she would, uh, so a lot of the things that I've been exposed to were from Bette and Mark. And, and we listened to all those things, you know, the Boswell sisters and, you know, and all of that. But the, but the, the great thing this was to, to, to write these kind of beautiful t torch songs for, for Adriana, which was when Har Harold Arlen was writing for Ethel Waters. And, uh, you know, it was a, a great uh, melding time, actually, where, the, you know, these uh, Jewish composers were writing for black artists. And so um, that influenced a lot of, the, of what, you know, was in our heads. Scott's 10%. Jewish on his manager's side. <laughs> <laughs> but Jimmy Lunsford and uh, Louis Jordan and Fats Waller and, you know, there's just, and Cole Porter, uh, you know, that's the era that we kind of wish we had li lived in and could have gone, can you imagine, can you imagine going to the Cotton Club and hearing those people, you know, singing these songs for the first time? Oh my God. Uh, so, you know, we just kind of write what we want to see. Yeah. And, and, and well, first we write it, we wrote what Casey wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, it's always what Casey wants yeah. to see. Yeah. He's the only director we've ever worked with who I 
I didn't mind when he said, what else you got? <laughs> <laughs> but it's very meaningful to, to me to, in this world where rightfully so, uh, women want to be, should be writing plays about women and black playwrights should be writing about the black experience, but that <laughs> we old white men don't get left behind because to be able to write like the song Nickel Matinee oh. for Sugar, that's completely about representation and feel, you know, feel like we as writers have, have figured out how to write that for the actress to be able to perform it so beautifully every night. Uh, I'm really happy that we, we are all that family that we can share in that. The collaboration on this musical is flawless. And you know, it doesn't happen all the time. You know, when director and playwrights and songwriters and everybody on your team comes together to make something that's perfect, which this show is. And I was wondering, when you three sat together with Matthew and then Amber came in, like what were the early conversations you had about tone and feel about the show? Because it's perfect. Honestly, it's been so long, it's hard to remember. <laughs> but it was all of us, it was the four of us first, just like sitting there. But um, so I'm getting like a little emotional it's okay. here. But I will say, yeah. like with you guys talking about Cole Porter and all the songs, I mean, I feel like I get to live that with you guys. And I really mean that. That, that what they the way they write for musical theater is what I like and the kind of thing I like to go see. So to get to do this with them and is just an absolute joy for me and a dream come true. So that was that was part of all of the first part of this is getting to you know having you guys write these songs and then have them like show up in my inbox. You know I would just be like <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh and I would just like sit on the couch and like listen by myself and it was heaven. It was absolute heaven. Um, but you know, we we really worked well together. We really worked well. That we did it little by little, and you know, got rid of stuff and added more stuff. And you know, it went through so many changes because we didn't really know the tone of the show. We knew lots of things we didn't want it to be, but we also didn't really know what we did want it to be yet at the beginning. And that was that was part of it, trying to figure that out. Yeah, right up until opening night. You know, <laughs> I mean, we really it never stopped until we had to. But you know, that's God bless what, you. Yeah. Oh my God. No, but that's when the audience comes in, and that's what Casey does best as a director choreographer. You listen to the audience and you hone your show. So for the cast, these roles are so beautifully written for all of you up here. What's it like living in these roles and what you wanted to bring to them personally, the kind of conversations you all had? Any of the, you can all any of you down there can start first, whoever wants to go first. <laughs> 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 Well, I'll just say first of all, too. One of, on top of everything else, the craft and yeah. the eye. What one of Casey's great strengths is in casting a troupe of people that can lift each other up and be there for each other over the course of a long run. Because there's no room for bad behavior. Nobody is that talented that you can be like, well, they're amazing, but they're a total asshole. And so there's no room for assholes in this company. And I've literally not seen. A, a crossword backstage between, and it's just again a testament to the group of people that you put together. So if you remove any kind of drama, then all that's left is for us all to just show up. And Jay and I often say to each other, you know, life is life, and you show up to do a musical, and we're very lucky. I feel so lucky that this is what I get to do for a living. But sometimes you're a little tired, and we look at each other and just say, like, one foot in front of the other, and we just start the show. And as soon as it starts and we come through these double doors, there's, and it's just a ride. There's, it's so well crafted that we just have to just keep talking and keep tapping and then just keep <laughs> changing clothes. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves at the very end and we stare across each other. There's you know, the little door that opens in the back and we have the last bow together and we look at each other and then we just kind of lean out. And then before you know it, we're looking at each other and bowing and it's all happened so fast and it's all been so fun and there's been so much laughter. and. You know, also, the great thing about doing musicals is there's a show behind the show. Yeah. And so what, what the audience sees is, you know, there, there's, there is a proscenium, and just off the proscenium, there's somebody standing right there, sometimes putting on a puppet show for the people on stage. <laughs> Yeah, you know, or like, it, and or as we make a cross behind, there's a whole play that happens behind the scenes, and so both stories are working very well at the Schubert Theater. But we had the great treat of um, a few people had been out of the show during the performances, and Casey had to go on in the show 
So he might want to share that experience with you. Yeah. Well, I was getting, yeah, he got to play spats in the show. Yeah, let's hear it for Casey Nicola, performer. I mean, it was kind of crazy because I was I was in shows as a performer and I hadn't set a show a line on stage in 20 years, <laughs> and uh, I was trying to get my associate to go on stage and play Adam Heller's part, and he was like, absolutely not. And then someone was like, well, you should do spats. I was like, oh God, well I could, and then everyone was like, well you're doing it, um, and you know it was absolutely horrifying the first couple of nights. Like, really horrifying. Like, I might have forgotten a cue. I might have yelled fuck on stage and then apologized to the audience. Um, it, was, it was really, really sort of nerve-wracking. But by, by the end of it, I, I just had the best time. And like, being on stage with everyone, I'm sorry, Christian and I didn't get to do it together. But, um, but being on stage with everyone, just it, it was so fun to see the show from what the, the angle you're talking about and also to see backstage. Like, people would come off off stage from the opening number, just like, eh, eh, eh. and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so so sorry, I'm sorry. And th and then just just uh, you know, Mark Latito, who I was on for, you know, had ripped a calf uh, uh, calf muscle, yeah. and uh, he says, I'm I'm gonna come back, I'm coming back Tuesday, and after doing it, I was like, you are not coming back Tuesday because you're gonna hurt yourself. I was so out of breath, I was like. <laughs> It was it was crazy, but it was so much fun to be on stage with everybody. It was it was amazing. I never thought that would ever happen, and I never want it to happen again. But uh, it was awesome. For the cast, what was it like having him in the show? Uh, thrilling. It was so good. Delightful. I love it. Delightful. Truly. Yeah. It was a little nuts. Thrilling to be and honest. terrifying it, it too. Terrifying too. Crazy. I mean, good crazy, but just fun to look over yeah. and see him. He's the director. Around. He's like, the director. Dad, Dad's on stage with us. Oh God. I was like, Casey. But Wait. it was also wonderful to support him the way we yeah. everybody supports each other in this yeah. company, regardless. <laughs> was like, it was that thing of like, we got you. Come on in. Like. They did. It yeah. was it was it was seriously like the first couple of nights, it was like, you know, LaGuardia back there that I get off stage and someone would be going like <laughs> <laughs> I ran over there and then they go like <laughs> It was, it was, it was nuts. But I was always struck that like, you know, everyone's faces were so close to mine. <laughs> I'm so used to being on the house and like watching them up there like I'm watching TV or something. And I was on stage, I'm like, oh, oh Jay's right there. <laughs> right there, hi. Because I remember, I think I saw you the first night you were on. I saw you in, in Schubert Alley, you had your flowers and all, and you're like, oh my God. You were like, I was backstage, like going through cue cards of dialogue, right? Gosh, uh, people want to, they want to talk to me. I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> oh, you come and I was just like going through my lines over and over and over. That, that is wonderful. I want to talk to you, Casey, about your work is glorious. How did dancing change after World War I, and what dance styles influenced you for the show? Oh, well, well... Uh, a lot of the a lot of the stuff, you know. What's funny is, you know, I did all kinds of research for like the traditional dances that were done then. Some of the Lindy, some of that stuff. And what's great is, or not great, is authenticity is not necessarily theatrical. So, so I would I would you know think about the movies I love, like you know like the old Hoofers and Gene Kelly and, and Fred Astaire, and also the the Ginger Rogers Fred Astaire numbers I really loved. And there was a number that these guys wrote for Christian and Adriana. Uh, in, in Act Two, that was going to be like a fantasy sequence, and you know everyone knows the traditional Fred and Ginger, you know, cheek to cheek kind of dance. And I found in Swing Time this really playful tap number, and I was like, I'd rather do that, and I think that would be more fun, especially knowing the two of you. And uh, it, I, I think it works beautifully, and it, it just was really fun. L a lot of Lindy. Yeah. That's what the opening number is. Because so I want to talk to the cast about you mentioned tap dancing early on. Like, who are the best tap dancers up here? Who would have worked the hardest? It's flawless. You're all so flawless in this show. But I was like... <laughs> well, clearly, I'm the best tap dancer clearly. in the show. And the reason I don't do it in the show is because it just would... The levels would be off. So it's just not... <laughs> so they've just decided to keep that under wraps for me. Um, Thank you. There. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I will say I, I I never imagined tapping like I'm tapping eight times a week on Broadway, um, but I'm I I'm a, an artist who loves to meet a moment and rise to the occasion, and so I love that Casey was very intentional about making the time for Christian and I to like go into a room just the two of us during our workshops in the labs to like nope go over these steps and like make the time to do the thing and get together and create that 
chemistry and that that uh, that relationship. Um, but tapping and <laughs> as Demarius would say, in a pump is a whole different thing. Like the whole <laughs> rehearsal, I was doing it in a flat and then got the heels when we got. And that was a different thing. Um, but yet again, it was just another moment to rise to the occasion. And it's been a fun challenge to just have fun and give into it and be like, all right, what are we doing? What's the story? And be truthful. Yeah, Casey is a master at drawing out the gold in you, truly. Like, it, like he does it so well. <laughs> He'll push you to where you're like, I don't know if I can do this eight shows a week, which is great to challenge you to like face yourself and see what you can actually do. Cause I know me, I can get real comfortable when it comes to dancing. I love to move. Uh, I love to do all the things, but this was like, I, I know from the workshop, whenever we did the original number with me and Christian, it was like a pas de deux, more of a, you know, I gotta, I gotta try to, did I kick my face? I don't kick my face. I can't kick my face. I'm not that type of dancer at all, but the type of dancer is like, oh my gosh, I have to turn. Like he, you want me, you want him to turn me, like hold my hand and turn me around. I get freaked out about stuff like that so when he actually changed it to the tap I said amen I can do the tapping I could actually tap better than all of that stuff but what a it was such a, a rising to the occasion thing it was like okay if we do this eight shows a week you're going to take dance classes you're going to do this because he actually has shown you that what is in you that you didn't even know that you had um and that's been the journey the dance journey with this show for me at least <laughs> Remember the suitcases? Yep. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, what oh, was that? that was a cute dance, yeah. though. And up and down. And, and I have to tell you, down. I was That's backstage cute. just the other night, and I saw this is show business wrapped up in a perfect paragraph. When Adriana is about to make her entrance as Sugar, and she has this wonderful moment where the, the suitcases part, yeah. and she comes out. But on her way on stage, she's like, has to go like this behind the, behind the suitcases. I was like, that is showbiz. Like, <laughs> Yes. Hammer. What's funny too, because because really at the beginning there was only one tap number. It was the tap number for the two guys, and then we sort of added some in take it up a step. But it just kept being the vocabulary of the show, and we just added more and more. And then you know the chase that happens in Act Two. Um, Pre-pandemic, when we did the lab, it was just people running, you know? And then during the pandemic, I thought, oh my God, we all got all this tap. It would be great to sort of have it all culminate in all of the stories coming together with a tap number. And that's how it happened. And talk about the language of, of the choreo in the show and, and us finding the show and it settling and hearing audiences see and receive that every night in such a beautiful way of like Christian and I do that tap chase in act one and it gives you the hint of what's coming later. And the audience really does go on this ride with us and they're with it and it is just so beautiful to, to feel them receive it every night and see it in such a beautiful way. And you're like, oh, you really are on this journey with us. And it's just, it is so exhilarating because you're like, this is exhausting, but as long as y'all are with us, <laughs> wonderful. It makes it all worth it, it really is. And no discussion of this show and, and the dancing, it has, you have to mention Glenn Kelly, oh. who is the most brilliant oh, yeah. guy, our dance arranger, underscorer. I mean, he is truly the glue that is, you know, bonding us all. And his work in the show is just fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Christian, tap dancing for you. You all make it seem so effortless. I got better. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, they carry me, just to say that. Um, Not true. It, it, ooh, it, 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 it. We carry each other. That's yeah. true, yes. that's true. But you think more sounds than I do. <laughs> um, when I replaced Bert and Mary Poppins. I was like the fourth Bert. And, you know, and step in time is hard to do. And it's a lot of tapping. And at one point I had to do like a solo where I sat on a Dimney Center stage. And the entire cast just goes... <laughs> Me, and I was really bad. And Sam Strasfeld, who's one of the greatest tappers on Broadway, was in the ensemble, and he would sit stage right on a chimney, and they turned his tap mics on, and he would mimic my moves, and I would... And Sam would just be like... Kata, kata, kata. He was so good. I never got good at that one. But um, I'm getting better at this one. It feels, it feels really good, and it's... Yeah, I, I feel okay about it. Clap, go right... It's effortless. I mean, it's, it's oh. show-stopping moments in the show when you... Do the tap. All right, now for all of you, the chase in the second act. How long is that? How long is the chase? How long? Five is minutes it? and seventeen seconds. <laughs>
Yes, I, I've, I haven't counted that, but literally there are people in the cast who are like, no, it's five minutes and 17 seconds wow. of pure like running around, yeah. So when Casey told you all that this is what we're gonna do in the second act, the taps are all coming back for everybody, you know, what went through your minds? And like, how long did you rehearse this'll that? This will never work. <laughs> There's a lot of this. Oh, yeah. On. We were like, oh, this will change when we get on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, no, 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 no. This is ever. And then we made it work. How long is tech going to be? Right. <laughs> That's what went through my yes. mind. That's tech. They're going to yeah, tech this for weeks. When we did, the, when we did that, for that, that, um, that lab, right. we rehearsed the entire show, did the entire show, and then we were done. And we were like, yay. And he was like, now next week, we're going to work on this chase. And we were like, what? We just did the whole show. And in he's three like, weeks. <laughs> yeah, in three weeks. We're going to use the last week, the whole week, yeah, work we did. on this yeah. thing. Because I didn't know how it was going to be or how it was going to work out. I mean, that was, speaking of this, I thought, well, this is really risky. This could just be awful. And audiences won't go with a whole idea of suddenly you know, wrapping up all the storylines through dance, you know? And I thought, what on earth will we do when, I mean, I did keep myself up at night. I was like, what on earth will we do if this doesn't work? Because then we're gonna have to write scenes and we're gonna have to come up with, you know, all kinds of other stuff. But the first preview, I couldn't, I mean, I kind of couldn't believe it, you know? And uh, we just kept, but over the period of like four years or whatever, since we did the, you know, the one week one to the where it is now, we just kept, like, we cut here, and then we added there. And I, I was like, I just kept asking, what story beats are we missing? I didn't feel like, you know, I'd taken care of, of Christian and Adriana enough, so we added a little thing there and just kept, you know, maneuvering it and moving things around so that we could figure out what was going to tell the story the best. That's also when you really trust the director, because yeah. if you guys could see things from our point of view, it looks like chaos. I mean, yeah. it just looks like people are just running around like Muppets with their hands <laughs> in the air. And doors are flying everywhere, and it doesn't look like anything. And then, you know, during tech, I got to set out and watch like the lighting of it and think, oh, there's a story being told. I can see it. It's all happening right there. But <laughs> we see none of that. So um, yes, I remember once during tech uh, that some of the some of the dancers are sitting in the wings while we were staging stuff, and they were they were watching something and laughing. I was like, what are you guys looking at? They're like. The chase, like not, they had never seen it, and they were watching it and laughing and 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 crying and everything, and it was like so much fun to watch them because they had never seen it because they were just running around and taking notes and doing all that kind of stuff. Some like it hot brings so much joy to audiences. I have told all of you this before. I love when I get out of another show. I love to stand by the Schubert and watch the doors open. Oh wow! And I love to watch your audience come out of a theater because you get the joy of why we all fell in love with the theater when you watch audiences come out of this theater. They've got smiles on their face. You can still hear the orchestra playing their stuff and it just, like Broadway comes alive. So I wanna thank you all for that. If you could each sum up the best part of the experience of being a part of this show, quickly what it's meant to each of you. Anybody can start. I would say yeah. right now, just the fact that we're all sitting here right now, yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> It means we've done our job. I'll second that. Enjoy doing it. I just love the, the this is the kind of show that got me um, interested in longing to be a musical theater performer. It is everything that I think Broadway is and should be. And, um, and that's what I'd eat every day, a slice of Some Like It Hot. I mean, you know, I, you come to the city and you like, you know, you think you have something to offer and you never know if you'll get the chance to, to sit at the table and offer it. Um, and, to, and then you find yourself in a room with these people and you look around and you think, my God, like, I, 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 do I belong here? I mean, these people are talented people. Like, I am obviously the weakest link in this room. What, what am I doing here? How did I wind up here? Um, and then you start to realize, or they start to, to make you understand, you have something to offer. That thing that you came, you, that, that you thought you had to offer, now's the time to offer it. And I feel like uh, I've gotten that chance with this show and I'm just so grateful. Yeah. Um, this show for me is all encompassing with like <laughs> a dream that I've always had and a dream that I didn't even know I had um, with just doing things that um, I used to, think about as a kid and also the dream of working with such great people that have stretched me that have loved me and been so graceful um, gracious towards me and um, believed in me like that was something that's like yeah that's a part of the dream as well too that you 
want to have. Um, it's been just a joy and a delight. I'm so, uh, the uncynical and now unmasked laughter that happens backstage and in the audience. And by the way, continue to wear masks, whatever makes you comfortable, that's not a judgment. I love it. Um, but to suddenly, after all of that hardship, to see faces again and to see them laughing so hard and to see us laughing at each other, with each other, with them, uh, it's very, very healing. And so thank you all for that. Beautiful. I know. <laughs> Oh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> we are all lucky to have done so many projects and to, to have worked with incredible people. And you, you never think the next one will be better than the last. And this group of human beings has been so freeing, so supportive, so beautiful in every way. And it has been a delight, a joy, and such a journey to create with these people. Um, we knew we had something special, even if it was just for us. But for audiences to have received what we've created in such a beautiful way is the cherry on top of the Sunday we had already created for ourselves. And so I'm grateful to each and every one of you for who you are, what you bring to this, what you brought out in me, and I love you. I love you too. For the creators, you all work in the theater. You come back year after year. I mean, there's nothing like crafting for the theater. I know it's one of the hardest Even things. Even when they don't want us sometimes. Oh. <laughs> they always want you. But like I said, you know, it's the hardest thing. You all work, you work on TV and film too. It's a much, you know, it's a, maybe it's an easier world. It's so hard to put a show on. And you, there's so much money that goes into a Broadway musical, and it's like making that cake. And you all sit in a room and you say, oh my God, we've got Casey, we've got Mark, we've got Scott, we've got this great cast, we've got Amber, we've got Matthew. But you hope you put all those pieces together and you hope your cake comes out to be perfection. You know, you always come back to the theater. Just tell me why, why you continue to write for the theater. Can't do anything else. <laughs> That's beautiful. But also, yeah. it's, uh, there are, f for us, you have to uh, multiply and multiply the, the fact that what we do, we have Charlie and Brian on orchestrations and Mary Mitchell and Daryl and the copyists and every single musician playing every single note. I mean, there are there's so many people working every yeah. night, working, really working. Uh, so th that incredible community is just so fulfilling yeah. to see everyone having their jobs to do and doing it so well. Scott, for you. Uh, it's, it's lovely. It's, you're, you're in a family, you know, and you're always searching for that. And, um, and then you find it, and, yeah. and hopefully it, it, they stay together for a long time. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Also, I think I'm very proud of, of this particular show because the very characters, if they were living now, their lives would be endangered. And I really feel that that it's that we're we're maybe changing a few little minds out there while also entertaining them. And I I I, I find that I'm very it touches me. Yeah. I want to thank you all for spending the afternoon with me. I have known all of you from when Casey was a dancer, when you guys at three o'clock in the morning downtown, and all of you have watched you all become who you are. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you haven't seen Some Like It Hot, go to the Schubert Theater. If you've seen it, go again. You'll have the time of your life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richie. Some Like It Hot. Thank you for coming.